Hello and welcome to my channel where I do guys for photography. Today we are taking a look at an application that's for Nikon cameras and that's the NX Studio from Nikon and that's a free software you don't uh, need to pay anything to use this software and I've tried the software different software from uh, Nikon before and I haven't really liked the previous software but NX Studio, it's actually pretty good. So if you're a Nikon user, you can just follow this video and I'll try and show uh, what the different features inside this software are and how to process an image. So we have this generic uh, landscape image. Uh, it's just a snapshot really and it's pretty boring there's no true sky here or clouds but anyway let's just process this uh, quickly here so let's start at the top here here you have picture control and you can set the picture control in your camera so uh, usually I shoot with the landscape picture control but that doesn't really matter as long as you shoot raw. You can set that at anything. You can always change it in post. If you're shooting JPEGs, then uh, <laughs> then you really need to know what picture control you are sh uh, choosing because it's harder to change that later. But for raw files, really easy to change. So under here we have camera compatible or latest picture control. So let's try for example the latest picture control and you can see that it does a good job really to lift the shadows uh, but it also removes some of the contrast and in this case on this image I actually like the camera compatible one more. Alright, so the next here you have white balance and of course you probably know what white balance is. Uh, so color temp, in this case, it seems pretty spot on. So it's at 58, 32 Kelvin and that's, uh, I think that's correct for this image. Anyway, you have a droplet tool that you can, for example, pick a neutral gray color so if i hit this one and for example try to set the white balance of the this little boat house you can see <laughs> that really turned this in into something terribly blue and of course we don't want this <laughs> this uh, white balance it's not doing this image any favors to be honest so if we want to, we can revert back to original value. And I think it's, as I said, pretty spot on. So we are going to leave it at original value. I think you can do auto as well. So calculate automatically. And yeah, it <laughs> removed some of the warmth. So it went from, I think, 58. Uh, 100 Kelvin down to 5500 Kelvin and that doesn't seem yeah it seems correct I guess and then you have auto 1 auto 2 so you have different presets as well under the white balance here and of course you can uh, move the sliders if you want to uh, for example you can add some magentas to the tint or if you have a color cost, you can remove the color cost with the tint slider. That's what that is for. So for example, say we have a really green color cost here. We can use the tint slider to pick <laughs> uh, the correct tint. I like to add some magenta to my landscape images. Not always, but... Uh, in this case, I want some magentas, so I might actually go down in more. And as you can see, 
on the screen here when I'm using the sliders it can sometimes start to flicker and I guess you can actually if you if you go into the uh, control software for your video card and then you can try and disable vertical sync for the application that might help anyway here we have exposure and you have original value and then you have some presets down here and i think in this case that the exposure value is pretty okay i'm just going to increase the exposure just a little bit to around there okay so then you have the active d lightning this is something that you can also set in your camera but being that this is a raw file it doesn't really matter what i set in the camera because i can change it on the hair so i can set for example the d lightning <laughs> d lightning is dynamic range so you're making sure that you have details in the blacks and the shadows and details in the highlights so imagine that this is a range so of course if you don't have dynamic lightning activated you maybe have this big range and then you have different presets for a dynamic range and you can for example put it on low then you have this range and then it increases the range so let's try off you can see that now <laughs> it's darker in the shadows we can try and put it on low and didn't really change anything that you can see normal high and extra high and you can even go for higher than that so there you have it now it did flatten the image some so i'm actually going to extra high and i can like that all right so then you have the toning so you have uh, brightness contrast saturation highlights shadows and dynamic lightning h s so that's actually you can compress it the dynamic lightning or the, the di <laughs> or the dynamic range with this slider you can for example push most of the highlights and most of the shadows into the mid tones so if i go up here you can see that it's flattening the image and <laughs> sort of puts everything into the mid-tones and in the same sort of tone range and in this case i don't like it but sometimes you want to compress uh, the tones uh, especially if you want to recover highlights or shadows all right so the highlight protection if we had some blown highlights in this image we could try and go up on the highlight protection and it would try to recover details in the blown highlights uh, in this case we don't have any blown highlights all right so the shadow protection that will try and lift the shadows lift the blacks and recover details so we can try that slider And as you can see i'm lifting the shadows and i feel that's a bit too much and then you have satur saturation and that uh, of course controls uh, the strength of your colors or the intensity so if i put that up to around here you can clearly see that we are boosting colors and it's a bit too much so let's just back that down all right so the next part here we have the levels and curves and i usually set the white and black point in a curve 
if uh, I have software that I'm able to do so. So let's just try and add the black and the white point here. So whenever I'm talking about the black and a white point, it's uh, in a landscape image, you want maybe uh, almost always you want uh, deep contrasts and setting a black point you will set the black point to where you are almost crushing the blacks meaning that uh, blacks uh, will have no details but <laughs> you don't want that but you want it as close as you can get it to where it's crushing the blacks uh, so let's set the black point so i'm moving down the curve here and you can see that this really increases the blacks and yeah that's sort of nice but we also need a white point to create the contrast between the blacks and the whites and in this case we can go up to the highlights here on the curve and pull that up this creates uh, what's called a S curve so it sort of looks like a S <laughs> and that really puts out some more contrast so if I click this you can see this is without the curve and this is with the curve so more contrast and it looks better in my opinion and you can even add more points so if you want to lift the mid tones or maybe pull the mid -tone tones down you can do this that as well so let's pull the mid tones up uh, or, or maybe down so you can clearly see what that does so something like that maybe all right so we also have uh, lightness chroma and hue adjustments and this is where we can control the intensity of the colors and uh, stuff like that so chroma uh, that's basically saturation except it's supposed to not uh, change the luminosity so if you boost a color in when using chroma it shouldn't change the uh, light it should only change the colors uh, if you think saturation that usually also changes the luminosity or light as well as it's changing the colors so it's uh, pretty easy to use this software i like it a lot actually when it comes to color and tones so what we can do if we want to for example darken the sky we can hit this droplet tool and we can add an anchor point and you can clearly see okay so over here we have an anchor point it's in the blues and we can if i go up here i will boost the blue colors and i think if we do width we can set the range so let's do that so now we should have changed the blue intensity um, but we shouldn't have, have affected the light or luminosity so this is without the lightness chroma and hue and this is with the lightness chroma and hue and you can clearly see that we are indeed boosting the uh, color intensity let's add another anchor point there are some sort of reddish uh, uh, tones over here so yeah we can for example boost that as well so let's pull that up and let's uh, extend the range there and that also boosts uh, everything over here and it's a bit heavy so let's just back that off just a little bit something like that and it's still a bit heavy so let's go down even more all right so that's a bit about colors 
and you can for example go here and you can change the hue uh, the lightness and the master lightness so if we want to change the hue on yeah never mind it's not i don't want to change the hue in this image because uh, we have sort of the same tones here so and it's fine right now but this is where you can change the hue if you want to and the lightness and i really like that down here we have something called color booster and i guess it's sort of like a saturation or it should actually be saturation so you can clearly see what that does so you can boost a lot here I think if you hit people there, it shouldn't change the skin tones too much. It should try and preserve the skin tones. So <laughs> if you're doing portraits, make sure that this is selected whenever you use the color booster. All right, so noise. Often when recovering shadows or if you have a blue sky, uh, the image will have noise and if you shoot with a high ISO the image will uh, probably have noise and under adjust details and noise reduction is where you can try and fix that I don't think I have any noise in this image uh, let's go into a hundred percent and take a look yeah I have some noise in here but I'm not sure that you can see it but I'm going to try and recover it anyway. So under here we have original value. So if you change anything, you can go back to original value. So method faster. I'm not sure uh, we should use faster for this image because we have color noise and regular noise. So let's try and do better quality and go up on the intensity and I'm just waiting to allow the software to render the image or the changes and I don't like it I don't think it's doing a good job let's try even more yeah that's a lot better all right so let's go back to fit view all right it's uh <laughs> it's clearly removing too much so we can go for original value again and just boost it a little bit and i think that does a good job all right so we can of course also do sharpening but uh yeah, let's sharpen just a little bit here so let's go up to around there and i think that's enough uh touch up that's of course uh, just uh, uh, repair or if you need to remove dust spots or whatever you can use the touch up tool i don't think i have any dust spots here no not as far as you can see anyway all right, so now we come to something interesting and that's the control points. What control points allows you to do is to target a specific uh, range of tones. So if I want to, for example, darken the blues even more, I can add a control point and just clicking up here and I'm clicking on the blues. And if I want to, I can show what area that will affect so it's creating a mask so let's just show affected area and you can see that it's uh, affecting most of the sky here so let's uh, try and extend the range i want it to affect more here we can try and move it and whenever you show the affected area it usually takes a little bit to time to render it now i can change the hue saturation the brightness the contrast 
the red, green, blue, and the warmth. Let's not do that. So we have now control over the brightness, contrast, saturation, and also the range. So yeah, that's a pretty good range. And then we click this away. And now, for example, I can drop the brightness for the blues. And even more if I want to. And you can see that we probably need a couple more uh, control points. <laughs> but that's a bit too much. So let's do something like that. Let's just add a control point here as well. And we can also choose to show affected area for that control point. And it sort of picks up what we missed with the other control point. So that's good. Let's just extend the range. And that's fine. Okay, so... Yeah, it takes a little time to render again here. There we are. And we can drop the brightness for that area. So this works uh, pretty well in my opinion, but I do wish that we had uh, more masking uh, options in this software, but it is pretty good. So I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna keep that adjustment. I just wanted to show you how to do it. Then we have the adjust composition and the crop now is at original value. And if, oops, if you do something uh, with the crop and you don't like it, you of course go back to original value. Let's hit crop tool. And now we have free crop. Maybe I want to do a four by three. I can do so. Or even 69. Let's, let's try that. And as you can see, we have this tool. It's not the usual thing where you start by dragging down the corners of the lines up here. You simply go out with your mouse cursor and you drag it out like this. Let's uh, pull that up a bit. And now you can pull in the corners just like this. And that's fine and just hit proceed and that's uh that's pretty good i do think that we need to straighten the image just a little bit and this is where we can do that so we can take the straighten tool and for example go from the, that to this i didn't do a really good job so let's do it manually instead oops and pull it to something like that. Yeah, that's fine. So that's adjust composition. Then you have camera and lens correction. And it says original value as usual. Uh, axial color abbreviation. I'm not sure what that does. And uh, maybe it uh, recovers fringes or something like that. Then you have auto distortion control. And that's uh, where you actually correct the distortion of the image. And finally, you have vignette control. So that's so far in this software. I think it's a really good software, actually. Um, I like it a lot. Uh, so the things we should do now is just to finalize the image. And I'm happy about the white balance, but I do want to lift the shadows just a little bit more. So let's do that. Even more. Yeah, some more. <laughs> and we are starting to flattening it. So let's lift the contrast. Yeah, I think that's okay. Uh, so that's uh, NX Studio 
free software from Nikon. And I do think it's a really great uh, piece of software that uh, lets you manipulate images uh, really easily. It is a bit slow. It's not the fastest software, but it's, uh, well, let's say it's not as fast as, for example, Adobe Lightroom, but it's faster than uh, on one for the raw. So it's somewhere in between. So if you have a Nikon camera and you don't want to buy software to develop your images, especially raw images, you can download Nikon uh, NX Studio and just play around with your images for entirely free. And I really do like that. And uh, it's it seems like Nikon are updating the software uh, often. Uh, I think that's it for this video. If you like this video, hit that thumbs up. If you want to watch more videos from me, hit that subscribe button. And if there's anything you want to ask me about anything or NX Studio, hit the comments. And if you want to see more videos about NX Studio, just... Uh, Leave a comment and uh, tell me what you want to see and I will try and make a video for that. Thanks a lot for watching and I hope to see you again. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.